All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's video. In today's video, we're going to go over slicers again. I recently updated Orca Slicer and I decided to go ahead and o update uh, Bamboo Studio at the same time. And I noticed that Bamboo Studio now has a calibration tab and it doesn't look exactly like it does for Orca Slicer. So I thought it would be a good uh, video to go over the similarities in normal print operations as well as the differences in calibrations so that we can fine tune our filament and get that perfect print. And as you know, that one word reason for using Orca Slicer was calibration. So now that Bamboo Studio offers it, it seems like we do need to look at both of them to help us make a decision. So in today's video, we'll go over both Bamboo Studio as well as Orca Slicer. And at the end of the video, hopefully I'll be able to decide and you'll be able to decide which of these slicing software will be right for you in your printing journey in the future. So if all that sounds good, then sit back and relax and I'll get everything ready. All right, so let's take a look at the slicer side by side here for a moment. <clears throat> and on the left here, we have Orca Slicer. And on the right here, we have Bamboo Studio. And you'll see that mostly everything is the same. We have a user manual here, whereas here we don't. Uh, you'll see most of the buttons and everything are very similar. Calibrations in a different place. We'll see that that's actually a new button in Bamboo Studio. Uh, but everything is fairly straightforward. And as for me, I really don't mess with a lot of the settings here uh, under quality, strength, speed, or any of that. Now, I know some of you do, and that if that's what your print, 3D printing journey um, entails, then um, definitely mess with this stuff. Um, that's not what my 3D printing journey entails, so I don't really mess with all of this stuff. I will say for the most part, it seems like Orca Slicer has more you know, things that you can mess with, right? There's a couple of different options in some of these that you don't have in Bamboo Studio, right? Um, so very slight differences, but that could be the difference maker for you. Um, it's not for me. That's not really where I mess with stuff. Where I really mess with stuff is in the filament settings from doing the calibration. And if we remember the reason why we um, want to do calibration is I do a lot of multicolor prints. And as you'll see here, I have eSun and Bamboo in the same AMS. And if I did a multicolor print with those two and just relied on flow calibration, it's only doing flow calibration on one of those filaments. So if those two brands of filaments are fairly different, then you could run into some problems with printing. So the whole reason that I use Orca Slicer is I can calibrate all of the different filaments. And that way, when I do multicolor prints, as you can see here, I can just call out the brand of the filament that I'm using and I can print with that and um, get better prints. Now, if I really went in here and did all of this stuff, then I could really fine tune that in there. Um, but you guys have seen several videos of me doing the Orca Slicer calibration and um, <clears throat> that's not really going to be the point of today's video because we've seen that before. And I kind of alluded to what the point of today's video would be is um, Bamboo Studio now has calibration in there. Um, so the whole reason that I went over to Orca Slicer is one word, right? Calibration. Now that they have calibration, I think it's fair for us to look at them again. So let's take a look at Bamboo Studio's calibration. All right, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to resync my filaments here. And I will tell you what I have in here. We actually have four brands of filaments in the first AMS here. We have eSun PLA Plus, Bamboo PLA Basic, Sun Lu PLA, and Polyterra PLA. So we have all four of those. And the reason that's important is 
let's go into calibration and read a little bit about this. Just remember in the first AMS that we have four different brands of filament in there. So flow dynamics calibration. When do you need to do flow dynamics calibration? We have now added the auto calibration for different filaments, which is fully automated and the result will be saved into the printer for future use. You only need to do the calibration in the following limited cases. New filament, brand or model, changing of the nozzle or the nozzles worn out. If you've watched my channel before and especially like the ludicrous mode video and I've made uh, comments to this and several other of the filament calibration videos, but max volumetric speed is really how you can fine tune how fast your filament uh, prints because that is really the thing that kind of guides all of the other settings in there and why I don't really mess with any of the other settings is because my max volumetric speed kind of changes all of them in a proportional way um, or print temperature is changed so if you change either one of those volumetric speed or print temperature then it's good to run this flow dynamics calibration again okay um, we won't read the rest of this and this shows a sample before and after so let's go ahead, um, and there is a wiki here. Um, you can click on that wiki and it gives you the instructions on how to do all of this. And there is an auto and a manual. And we'll go over, um, let's do the auto cal calibration first, and then we'll do a manual calibration and I'll tell you where that's gonna be useful and where this is gonna be useful. So let's go ahead and do the auto calibration. And um, first step is to set, set up what nozzle that we have. So you can even tune the different nozzles that you have, which is pretty cool with that, which plate that you're using. And notice that it does not have the PEI plate in here because the auto is using the LiDAR. Um, so it just has the engineering plate, high plate and cool plate. And then it has the different filaments here. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and check all four because we can do the flow calibration or the flow dynamics calibration on all four of them, which is really, really cool. So let's go ahead and hit calibrate here. And as you can see, it's going to take us about 15 minutes. So I'll see you in 15 minutes. All right, now that it's done and before we take a look at it, let's go ahead and hit the next button here. And we'll see that it um, put values in each of these in here. And if you remember, we had Esun, Bamboo, Sunlu, and Polyterra in here. So now what we'll want to do is make sure that we uh, name these and then they'll be available for us in the printer. And I'll show you that here in a minute. So in the first slot here, we had Esun, PLA, plus and that was with the cool plate bamboo basic cool plate this was sunlu pla cool plate polyterra pla cool plate um, and in some of these, I have named it white and different things like that. Um, I've tried this a couple of different times, um, but I think you can just do it by the manufacturer. If you want to do it by the color, you can as well. But now it's going to save these values into the printer. So let's take a look at what it printed, how that came out, and then what it looks like in the printer. All right, so as you can see here, here are the four calibrations and it just looks like the normal flow calibration that it does at the bottom down here anyway, or you know, the new style one that it does there. But what's really cool is it did four of them at a time and then it scanned and it did all of that and um, saved all of the results and then all of the results are saved into the printer, which we'll take a look at here in a minute. But I thought... It was really cool that we could do four of them at the same time. So this is the Esun, this is Bamboo, this is Sunlu, this is Polyterra. All right, so where you're going to find those uh, filament settings that we just put in here is whenever you click on the edit button there.
and you'll notice the dynamic pressure control is the E Sun PLA plus white that we set it to before. Okay, and if we confirm that and go over to this pink one, which was the Sun Lu PLA pink. So now whenever you load a filament, you can go in here, select generic PLA, select the color, then you can select the dynamic pressure control for that as well. <clears throat> so remember to do that whenever you're loading filament after you've calibrated it like this. All right, so here we are back into the calibration in Bamboo Studio, and we did the auto calibration. Now let's talk about manual calibration. So auto calibration, you know, the flow calibration that it does, does work pretty good. The issue with it is whenever you're doing a multicolor, multi-brand print, there could be some issues with that. So doing the auto calibration <clears throat> is really, really good. Um, I think that'll work for the cool plate and for, you know, I, I'll do it for ABS and ASA and the carbon fiber filaments and all of that on the different plates and everything. But what do you do about the PEI plate? And that's where the manual calibration comes into play. <clears throat> So in here, we can go to the manual flow dynamics calibration, set the 0.4 millimeter nozzle. And as we can see now, the textured PEI plate appears where it wasn't in the other one. So if you remember when we go to auto calibration, since it's using the LiDAR, it does not list the PEI plate here. So if you want to use the PEI plate, then you need to go through the manual calibration. So let's see what that looks like. We'll select the plate. And in our first slot, we have the um, <clears throat> eSun, which we've done a whole lot. What we haven't done is the SunLu. So let's um, calibrate the SunLu. And it looks like we can only do one at a time because it is gonna do the line. I think if you guys remember, or if you've seen, my other video on manual calibration, it's going to do the lines across and we're probably going to have to select which one is um, the best from there. Uh, so let's go ahead and hit calibrate and yep, sure enough. So it's going to put all those lines across there. And that is how we had success with <clears throat> printing on um, the PEI plate before. And this helped set the pressure advance. If you remember from uh, the Orca slicer, this is the pressure advance manual test or one of the tests that you can do for the pressure advance. Um, so it looks like it's going to do the same thing here. So we'll let it go ahead and let it do its thing. And I'll see you in seven minutes. All right. So I did try running this a couple of times. And we as we've seen many, many times with the PEI plate, the really, really tiny things don't like to stick on here. You can see that it balled up towards the end right there. But I can still see all of the lines here and which line is the best. And that's what we're doing in this test is determining which line is the best. Um, so I'll take a closer look at these and I'll determine which one of these is going to be one of these right here is the line that looks the best. And then I'll figure out how many lines up that is and put the value, the K value in the correct spot for this filament. But do be aware, I tried this two different times with this filament, once with the bamboo filament, and I changed the nozzle and I got the exact same result every single time. So... If you do this test on the PEI plate, do expect that the numbers and stuff right here might fall off like they did for me. All right, so let's go in here and set our K value for that. And it looked like to me around that sixth line or 0 0.030 or 0 0.025, Either one of these, um, I think, would work. We'll go with 0.03, then we'll call this Sunlu PLA PEI plate. All right, and then we'll go ahead and hit finish. Everything's been saved to the printer. And if you ever need to manage the result, you can look at all of the different ones that you have done on here. So as you can see, I've done quite a few of these, a couple of them twice. I'm just checking everything out. But um, 
you can always go in and delete the ones that you don't need or that you don't want or that are uh, multiples or whatever. So now let's get into the next test on there, which is going to be the flow rate. And we'll start out with the automatic calibration again, and then we'll go into the manual calibration and we'll use the auto calibration for the cool plate. So let's go through what this is doing. When to use flow calibration or flow rate calibration. After using flow dynamics calibration, there might still be some extrusion issues such as over extrusion, which is excess material on your print object, forming blobs or zits or layers or thicker than expected and not uniform, under extrusion, poor surface quality, or weak structural integrity. Okay, and there, there's more about that in there and more about it in the wiki. But let's go ahead and do the auto calibration. And it looks like we can only do one filament at a time with this. So 0.04 nozzle cool plate, and we'll start with the E-Sun. All right, and let's hit calibrate. All right, so this one looks like it's gonna take us about 20 minutes. So I'll see you in about 20 minutes. All right, so it did not take 20 minutes. It barely took any time at all. So let's go ahead and hit the next button and we'll go ahead and let it put its flow rate in there. And this was ESUN PLA plus white. A flow rate calibration result has been saved to preset. Okay, so let's see if it shows up here. And we do see that the flow ratio shows up in the filament uh, place right here. And this will show up as one of your presets once you do the flow rate. All right, so now that we're done with the cool plate calibration, what's cool about the flow rate calibration is you can actually do the textured PEI plate. So let's go ahead and try the eSun filament on the PEI plate and see if it can do the auto flow rate calibration. The manual calibration is the little tab things that we've seen before. Let's take a look at the wiki. All right, so in manual mode, this is the five step little tab test. And then the finer tuned one is uh, where it goes in between the one at a time right here. That's the second pass or the first pass, second pass in flow rate in Orca Slicer. So this is identical to that. So we won't go through this because we've gone through that a couple of times in Orca Slicer. Uh, as you remember, you do this first test, this is in steps of five with the extrusion right being over and under extruded from zero from where it's set right now. <clears throat> and you choose whichever one looks the best, right? And if two of them look the best, choose the higher number because the second test is steps of one. And that's how you fine tune it from there. So we've done that before in Orca Slicer. That's the same thing in here. But what's cool about this one is on the flow dynamics, we had to do manual in order to do the uh, textured plate. But with flow rate, it looks like we were able to do the textured PEI plate in the auto. So let's go ahead and give that a try. So we'll go to auto, textured plate right there, and we'll hit calibrate, and we'll let it do its thing. All right, so now that it's done with the PEI play, you saw what the little test looks like. It takes no time at all to do this, uh, so really, really easy to do. So we'll hit next, and we'll see that the flow rate is slightly different. It was 949, I believe, on the um, cool plate, but on the texture plate, it's 952. So we'll go ahead and name this as well, which is ESUN PLA Plus white PEI plate. And that's been saved to a preset.
and we'll see that when I choose the PEI plate, it changes it to 952. And when I change it back to the cool plate one, it goes back to 949. And I guess I should maybe rename this one. And to rename it, you just hit the save button there. And then we just want to specify the plate that you're using. So be sure that you specify the plate whenever you're saving these um, so that it's easier to reference. So you can see like, like I did there. So now I have my ESAN cool plate, PEI plate. All right. And that wraps it up for the calibration. Um, so now I'll go ahead and go back to the studio and wrap everything up. All right, so we got both of the cubes printed out. This is the one after we calibrated everything, and this is the one that I printed beforehand. Focus. There we go. And as you can see, like I said, no major errors in it. And as you could see here, no major errors in this one as well, but the whole point of us calibrating is for those multicolor, multi-brand prints, right? Because the flow calibration that it does in the beginning only calibrates one of the filaments. If you have multiple brands of filaments to get really cool prints with the different colors, then you could run into some issues with that. So <clears throat> in the thumbnail, you see that I'm, I said it's a clear choice between Orca Slicer and Bamboo and who wins. And it is, but it depends on where you want to take your 3D printing journey. Um, so each of them is a clear choice depending on what it is that you want to do with your 3D print. Okay, so for Orca Slicer, if you need every dial and button and thing that you can tweak and every single thing that you can do, Orca Slicer is a clear choice for you. Okay. If you want to still do calibration so that you can avoid the situation that I mentioned previously, but you don't want to tinker a whole lot and you want to make it easy, then Bamboo Studios calibration um, really does that. So it doesn't do all of the temperature and all of the, uh, all, you know, there's a ton of different tests that are in the Orca slicer. So Bamboo Studio doesn't have all of those. But what it does have are the ones that are important and probably have the most effect on your prints. Now for temperature and max volumetric speed, you can still um, <clears throat> calibrate those in Orca Slicer and put those in to Bamboo Studio. The only thing that you can't transfer over is the pressure advance. So if you do need to calibrate temperature and you do need, do want to calibrate the max volumetric speed, then you can do that and still put it in studio if you do want to use that. I think the big benefit is you can do the dynamic flow calibration and do four filaments at a time um, as long as you're using the cool plate. Um, but this is good for all of the different carbon fiber filaments. You can do four of those at a time on the high temp plate, or I can do the two ABS and one ASA filaments that I have in, at one shot and save those into the printer so that every time that I load it in there, I have those options ready to go for me. So I think that's really, really neat. And then once you do um, the flow rate, um, calibration, then that's saved into your filament settings and you can use that. Now I do think that is kind of weird to have one of the calibrations go into the printer and one of the calibrations stick with the filaments in the uh, slicer. I would expect both of those to stick into the filament tuning in the slicer, much like Orca slicer is, um, but I do see some reasons why Bamboo might do that. So let's wrap it up here so if you want to tinker with everything if you're making a whole bunch of products and you're going to run 10 rolls of filament through there 
it might be good to calibrate that filament through Orca Slicer and go through every single setting. If you kind of want to make it easy and you're a hobbyist like me, then it seems like the calibrations in Bamboo Studio are going to be enough to make sure that you have those high quality prints during multicolor prints. So for me and my print journey, I'm going to move forward with Bamboo Studio and, repl and replace Orca Slicer, which may surprise some of you guys, but I want to stay on top of the software that is best for me and my print journey. And for right now, Bamboo Studio seems to be the one that, that does that. So I'm going to end the video here and I'm going to continue to calibrate the 100 rolls of filament that I have <laughs> and spend the rest of my Saturday afternoon uh, calibrating filament um, and getting all of those settings put into my printer as well into the, uh, the presets for all of those filaments. Um, so I hope this video was helpful for you guys and I hope that you can make a clear decision on which slicer software is right for you. So have a great rest of your weekend. Have a great week and I'll see you next week. Thank you for everybody for hitting that like button. Thank you to my subscribers and thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Bye everybody. Thank mm -hmm. you.